Hey everyone and welcome once again to another episode of the Solar Punk Farmer. Sorry I haven't been putting out much content lately. I have been a very busy bee buzzing through my bountiful garden of a life. But today we'll be planting a Moringa tree that I received for my birthday from my awesome Papu. That is grandfather for those of you who do not know Greek terminology because I am Greek. The tree is actually already in the ground. I haven't even had time to record the intro footage. My life has been so overwhelming lately. but. Here we are, so <laughs> this tree came from a local nursery called Green Thumb and they just so happened to have one Moringa tree left over from the shipment that they received last summer. So I guess I lucked out. All right, so for those of you who don't know what Moringa is, it's probably one of the most useful trees known to mankind. Its leaves, the leaves of this Moringa tree are one of the most nutritionally dense foods in the entire world. They contain a broad spectrum of micro and macronutrients, vitamins, minerals, all essential amino acids, antioxidants, you name it. This tree is awesome. It is widely used in developing countries to combat malnutrition. And not only that, but it's an incredibly fast growing tree that can get to 13 feet tall in a single season from seed in Southern California. And not only is it so incredibly nutrient dense, but it has a wide variety of other uses. I'm probably going to be able to get around a dozen other uses out of this one tree here in the garden. Aside from the leaves being edible and highly nutrient dense, the pods are edible. The wood is very light and is excellent for use in compost or hugo culture. The bark and roots can be used for medicinal purposes. The flowers will attract bees and other pollinators like crazy. The seeds can be pressed for an oil that can be used for cooking, biofuel and industrial lubrication and not only that the seed cake that is left over for pressing the seeds can be used as a bioflocculating agent to filter water potentially even an aquaponics stay tuned i might try that someday and on top of all that i've actually already been growing it uh, these were started last season. This is actually a dwarf variety of Moringa that I decided to try and start in these little nursery bags here to see how they would do. It doesn't have any leaves right now, and that is because it is dormant. As spring continues to approach, it will begin sprouting new leaves, but this time I have a full-size variety and it is going to be put into the ground. Now, the challenge I'm being faced with is how do I plant this tree in my awful, terrible, Kalish soil. And I think I may have found a way. Now, please be advised, this is not a tutorial, this is not an instructional guide, this video is a vlog of the entire process. At this point, I would honestly say that I'm really just experimenting with a particular methodology to amend the soil here, so I guess we'll see if it works. Alright, well before we get to planting, I did want to show you guys something really cool that I just noticed today on the California Native Wildflower Bed. So let's go! All right, here's how the California native wildflower bed is looking. And as you guys can see, it is really beginning to fill out now. And I actually just noticed this today. So right here, we have the first flowers beginning to pop off. This is baby blue eyes, Nemophilia menziesi. And these couple that are going to bloom right now are most definitely not alone. There's another one right here that is going to be putting out a flower shortly. And plenty of the other ones in this bed are going to be blooming very soon as well. I am super excited to see these flowers come to life. All right, well, let's get to the Moringa tree. Well, here is my planting location for the Moringa tree. The nice thing about this spot is that the soil is actually already a little bit improved because I had bananas growing here a couple of years ago. I ended up removing them because they did not do too well in my climate due to the heavy winds we get here. But the soil here is quite a bit lighter and has higher organic matter content than the soil in other areas of my yard. I'll show you guys real quick. I was kind of digging through it right here already, but as you can see, it's actually not that bad. Uh, so I'm going to improve it further to ensure that this Moringa tree really thrives, but I'm already starting better off than I would otherwise because the soil in other areas of my yard is absolutely terrible, as you guys may know. Compare it to the soil over here, uh, which is a bit closer to my aquaponics system and literally can't even dig through it. So uh, we're off to a good start, which is nice. I think I'm gonna plant the Moringa tree right here by the sprinkler head because I may want to leave this area over here where this plant is currently growing open for more bananas because I might want to trial another banana variety over here such as Dwarf Namwa that'll be more resilient to the winds that we get in my area. 
All right, so here is our tree. I was told by the folks at the nursery that this tree is two or three years old. My main concern is that since it's been growing in a container its entire life, it may not have developed a very strong taproot. So it may have quite a bit less vigor compared to a Moringa tree that has been started in the ground from seed, but I guess we will see. The good news is that since Moringa trees grow very fast, if this one doesn't do very well, I could just remove it and then replant with a seed next spring. Moringa trees are actually quite tolerant of a wide range of soil types, but poorly draining soil such as mine does present some issues. Moringa trees do not like wet conditions at all, and therefore they require very well draining soil or else they could get root rot. And that's definitely something we do not want. And no, I'm not sure what variety this is. And no, it is not dead. It may look kind of sad right now, but Moringa trees are deciduous in my area. And as you can see, if I scratch the bark right here, it is very much alive. All right, so that's the Moringa tree. Here are the soil amendments I will be using. I have actually done quite a bit of research online about how to properly amend soil for Moringa trees. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of information about how to amend the kind of soil that I have here to begin with for planting, since it's something that is actually quite regional. However, clay soil is a decently close approximation to what I have here, so I'm sort of treating it like clay soil. I also asked some locals about what soil amendments I should use, and the two I were recommended uh, were Kellogg's Amend and Kellogg's Enrich. So I'm gonna be using roughly equal proportions of each in this planting site, as well as some all-purpose sand to increase drainage and some azomite rock dust to provide some micronutrients and silica to further enrich the soil and make for a stronger tree. I'm gonna put these two guys in here and see if that improves drainage enough, and I'm gonna probably put a pound or two of the azomite in there. And now onto my tools. I have my trusty iron digging bar right here, which is actually pretty great for breaking up the soil in my area. I have a regular shovel and then a pitchfork for mixing the amendments in. My plan is essentially to dig out a bunch of the native soil, backfill it in with the amendments, mix it back together, test to see if the drainage is adequate, and then plant the tree in a sort of mound so that water runs off into the surrounding areas. My intention here is to discourage water from pooling around the rooting zone of the tree, thus preventing root rot. All right, let's get to digging and planting. <laughs> So I have a pretty decent sized hole dug now. My intention is to kind of dig a very wide hole so that I can amend the soil very heavily. That way the Moringa tree will have plenty of room to spread its roots around without the roots essentially becoming boxed in by the very heavy cement-like caliche soil that we have here. However, I did discover a couple interesting things, including a pleasant surprise that is actually going to be very advantageous for this Moringa tree. So the first thing is, uh, looks like uh, I hit a pocket of some sort of iron oxide maybe I'm no geologist but very very interesting color here and then as I continued digging down into this hole I encountered something that I did not quite expect to see but that pleasantly surprised me so you can kind of see how my soil is layered here so very heavy caliche clay interspersed with some sand and maybe some loam and then you keep going down and that same trend continues until we get a little bit deeper here and that's when I found literally straight sand. And it turns out that sandy soil like this is one of the best soil types for Moringa to grow in. So it looks like today is my lucky day and my soil is not quite as bad as I thought. Now to be fair, I was aware that the Kalish clay eventually would give way to sand, but I had no idea that I would encounter it only about a foot and a half down. So this is going to be a very big boon for my Moringa tree. Okay, so I think this hole is adequate. It's pretty deep probably almost two feet, if not two feet. I just kind of broke up the sand a little bit at the bottom to help aerate it a little. So now we're gonna do the all important drainage test. Here's this hose right here. It's a quick and dirty one. I don't really have time to do a fully fledged drainage test today. However, let's see. 
Yeah, it looks like the sand further down is a bit more compacted, but I don't think that's gonna be much of a problem in the long run. The water drained off of the sand that I had broken up pretty quick. So I think we are going to be good. Let's get the amendments going. I would drive a thousand miles just to get to you. The desert on the nights might break me, but I'll stand by you. It could take a million days, but I'll see it through. I climb the highest mountain, baby, just to be with you. We are done for now. This Moringa tree is now officially planted. I'm super excited for this. If this tree does not get established properly, if it dies, or it really just doesn't perform, I could always just rip it out and plant a seed in the ground, and I'm pretty much guaranteed to get better results that way. Plus, if I end up having to rip this tree out, I will have the opportunity to select a named variety of Moringa. Probably PKM1 is what I would go for, because it's an extremely fast-growing and vigorous variety, according to my research. So I guess we can say this is just a little experiment to see how a Moringa tree from a nursery does when transplanted into the soil. So here's my main concern right now. Let's take a look at the soil right here. So even though I've amended it pretty heavily and even though the material that is further down that I backfilled it with mostly is very sandy, the soil is still quite waterlogged and I think that's because even though the soil is composed mainly of sand further down, there are still some smaller particles that are causing the soil to retain water and remain waterlogged. And of course, Moringa will die in waterlogged soil, so it remains to be seen if this is a problem. All right, well, hopefully all goes well and this Moringa tree takes just fine. I have really high hopes for it. Again, it's supposed to be an exceptionally easy plant to grow, so I'm fairly confident it'll perform even in this terrible soil that we have here. I will report back on the Moringa tree's progress in the next video. All right, everyone, that is gonna do it for this video. In case you were wondering why it is dark outside, I forgot to film the outro sequence earlier. I might be losing my marbles just a little bit, so please go ahead and uh, pray to our Lord and Savior Cthulhu for me. <laughs> Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, found it informative, please make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be informed when I release future videos. I'm the Solar Punk Farmer, and see y'all later. Oh,